Now, I got another really good poker session to go over for you guys where I made some really good plays in this one, but I kind of just dominated this six max table. And I know a lot of you out there are looking to make some extra money playing online poker. And what's easily possible right now, in my opinion, is making an extra $2,000 to $10,000 monthly even if you're not the most skilled player. You know, I've uploaded now at least seven or 800 of these cash game videos showing you guys that it's really not that hard once you work on certain skills, let me repeat that, skills that will allow you to gain a small edge on your opponents over time. But it does take some time to get really good at this. But if you're putting in the work, you could get there a lot faster. And to give you some numbers of simply hitting $2,000 a month, you really only need to be playing around 10 to 20 hours a week, multi-tabling two tables at a time. It's really not that hard, guys. And you know, if you want to scale up the money you're making, you're obviously going to need to play longer or move up in stakes. Uh, anyways, right now, a great place to make this extra income is Ignition Poker. You know, I've been playing here now for like eight years, and I'm always logging in a few times a week. Of course, if you guys would like to learn more about Ignition, there will be some bonus and resource links you can check out directly below in the description. You could also get on our poker newsletter where we send out one email a week on hand analysis and tips to help you make more money at the tables. Don't forget to tap that like and let's get into these hands. Okay, also stick around to the end because, you know, I think... Um, this session was about an hour and a half and obviously, you know, we've condensed it down, but uh, a lot of good spots in this. And, you know, honestly, I made some really good bluffs, uh, at the right times in this. And I mean, I just, I just dominated here, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, now let's talk about the skills you need, right? Because there's, there's a lot, right? It's not just one or two things, you know? Um, one of the skills, and I talked about this in the last video, is just having really good emotional control when you're playing online poker because, as you guys know, sometimes things aren't going to go your way. And when they don't go your way, it's really important to, you know, not uh, either, you know, tilt your entire bankroll. Let's say you have like $1,000, uh, you know, in your poker bankroll. And let's say you lose two buy-ins for whatever reason. Maybe you're just not playing good. You don't want to take your remaining money and go play, you know, some slot games or you don't want to do some sport betting with that money. You really want to keep your poker bankroll as your poker bankroll, right? You don't want to you don't want to mess around with that. Um, and I think that's one of the one of the big things for a lot of people. I'm sure a lot of you out there can relate. But, you know, emotional control you also have to just have it in your life. You know, if you don't have any emotion control in your life, it's going to be hard to really excel at poker, whether you're playing online or live. And, you know, another skill that you're going to need to get good at is value betting. You know, you're going to see in this one that I did put in the correct sizing in a lot of good spots here because, you know, sometimes... Uh, you know, you want to get somebody's whole stack, but you got to realize it's not going to happen a lot of the time, especially if you if if you're just like way ahead. So you got to like figure out what to bet to squeeze the most money out of your opponents. This is something that takes time to get good at. And even to this day, I don't always get it right, but it's going to help you, you know, squeeze a little bit more money out of your sessions, get your ROI up and really just help grow your bankroll or whatever you're trying to do, you know, um, just add to your income, right? Another thing I talk about is not playing too many tables at a time. And what's interesting is, you know, the normal advice out there for playing online poker is to kind of just stack as many tables. You know, usually like I would say a lot of people say play four tables at a time, you know, and then maybe six, maybe even eight. But you got to realize that when you're playing, you know, let's just say four tables, I can't even do four tables really profitably because, you know, as you move up in stakes, players do get better. And if you want to make more money, you need to be playing a certain stake like 200 no limit where you can at least make a good hourly rate for your time. You know, the problem I have with playing those low stake games is you're sitting there, you know, for what, like a few hours to make like 25 or 50 bucks. It's just stupid, guys. <laughs> like it is. I mean, obviously we're all playing for entertainment, but you know, you should really just think about moving up in stakes. You know, I kind of just keep it between 200 no limit and 500 no limit, but I do play the thousand dollar games as well. So I do add those in there. But I mean, you got to understand that like, you know, your time is worth something and you don't want to be playing those really low stake games. It just doesn't make any sense. But, you know, multi-tabling, once you're playing, you know, a certain limit, you don't need to play all these tables at a time. You just want to focus on the games you're playing because 
the focus is what's going to make you money. You know, it's, it's picking up on those little things. Did somebody hesitate? Did they bet too quickly, which is usually a sign of bluffing most of the time? Did they four bet? Did they five bet? Do you think that, you know, they're, it, there's just all these little things, right? And like I said, these are skills. They take time to get good at, but the more you're putting into this, you know, the better, the better you're going to get over time. I mean, it's really that simple. Another thing I always recommend you do is use the hand replayer. So when you do the hand replayer, it's just going to pull up all the hands you played in the session. And then that way, you know, you could kind of just review your sessions to see what you could have done better in those, um, maybe for the next one. Right. So it's kind of like, just, it's a lot of, it's a lot of little things, guys. Anyways, stick around because like I said, we have some really interesting plays here. And, uh, I think the bluffs that I made in this one were also like really well-timed. All right, so I went for a min raise here, and unfortunately, he did not call. So, yeah, that was kind of a, a small value raise there, hoping he had, you know, a pair where he might call or like a king maybe. But whatever. think this got through okay yeah we got that one through that was nice all right just a little aggression there paid off bunch of low cards all right so this was an interesting spot and let me explain something to you guys when somebody um when somebody lightly three bets you and you've got a hand, we'll just say like jack nine or queen nine, you know, you have to look at it like this. If you're up against one other player, um, even if they have a hand like what, like ace king or maybe some kind of weird pocket pair, you know, your hand is not by any means dead. So I do recommend making calls. And uh, what I did here was I made the call and it was a pretty bad flop, especially if he's got over cards, which is what I was thinking anyways. So when he put in a raise here, this is a little bit more advanced, but I just came over the top on him to see where he was at. So basically what I'm representing here is kind of like a set or maybe a big flush draw, but this is going to make it really hard for him to continue if he's got a hand like ace king or ace queen or something like that. And he ended up just mucking it. So that play worked out really good there. And that's really just thinking about what your opponent might have. You know, with that light three bet and I made the call, you know, obviously you got to be thinking like, okay, was that flop good for him or was that kind of like, and did he bet a lot into the flop? For example, like if he's coming out betting like 20 or $30, that's usually just a giveaway that he's got, you know, a big pocket pair. So then it might just make sense to fold. But the way he bet that on the flop was kind of like he was scared of that flop. You know what I'm saying? So I just pounced all over him and we took that one away. Now, this was a really good flop for us. But, you know, um, low flush draws like this can be tricky, you know. And this guy, what was interesting to me was like he was still showing some aggression here. So... It doesn't always happen, and like the odds of this happening are pretty low, but flush over flush. It's just that ours was so low, but we did have the straight flush drop, that I kind of just, um, I just kind of like let this guy do what he did, you know. Uh, I did not go for a raise here, if you, you know, that's just kind of the way the hand played out. But like when you have those low cards, you know, like the four fives and the five sixes, you know, um, it is what it is. Uh, obviously, I think I could have probably got more money out of that hand, but I kind of played it like, you know, I was just kind of like hoping he didn't have a flush. It does It does happen sometimes, not all the time, but it has happened to me a lot where I've lost flush over flush, where I've had it like, you know, the 6-7 or the 5-6 or the 4-5 or sometimes even like the 4-3. So, you know, it does happen. But whatever, it is what it is, right? All right, so we had the same suit for this king-queen, but this board was bad, and this guy, I think, bet like 10 bucks at it, and I was kind of like, what are you saying you have? Um, I just folded it. I didn't even want to continue. 
I think the turn card was bad anyways, I'm pretty sure. So, you know, it is what it is. It wouldn't help us. But um, anyways, hope you guys are enjoying some of these hands. But like I said, continue sticking around because we still got some good stuff coming up here. Plus, I think I got up to like 460 in this one. So, yeah, we still uh, we still got a ways up to go here. Yeah, the turn card would have been bad there. So whatever. All right, so we had an ace six suited. Now there is an argument to make a three bet here. I just decided to make a call, but I could have easily three bet this one to like $18. Really what that would have done was protect my hand um, uh, and blind. So he could have just folded. We could, I could have stole the blinds. You know, worst case, if I did three bet him, we still hit a pair on the board here. And really what I'm hoping for here is and I made this call. I just didn't believe he had anything. But we did hit the ace on the river here, which was a great card for us. Um, he ended up checking it. We took it down. I think that was fine the way that played out. I don't even know if he had anything. You know, I don't know if he had a pair of tens or if he had just nothing, <laughs> which is possible too. All right, so I slowed this one down because this was kind of like... This was a hand that I wanted to like give you guys an understanding of what I was thinking here. Now, when you have a queen jack offsuit, it can be tricky, especially if you're dealing with three bets. But uh, the way this hand played out was obviously really good for us. We had a really good ri um, river card. And I stayed very aggressive in this hand, you know, regardless. And it was just a board that, <clears throat> you know, didn't hit us at all. I think it was like a king that came out. It was like a king nine deuce or something like that. Let's see. Or no, I'm sorry. It was a three nine four. So really nothing here. And this is a good flop to bet into. I know there's a flush draw out there, but still, you know, I still bet into it. Because, you know, we could still hit our queen or jack on the turn for sure, which would, you know, probably put us ahead here. The king was also a good card because now I could represent a king. So if I'm betting enough here, I could probably get this guy off the hand if he's got like one pair, right? And that's what I did. I, I bet pretty big here. So I just double barreled him. When he made the call, that's kind of when I realized that this might be a little bit harder to get him off. But the river card, you know, was insane. It was insane. But if we run this back, you know, looking at this, that was a pretty bad flop. I and mean, if he's on a flush draw, if he's got a hand like, I don't know, like five, six maybe. But when we hit that 10 on the river, Really what I figured was going to happen here was we weren't going to get paid off. You know, even if I put in a small bet, I think I bet like half the pot. And um, I wasn't expecting it to get called here. But yeah, I wasn't expecting a call here, but I was definitely glad when he did make the call. So really, no idea what he had. Two pair, maybe just putting me on that missed flush, which I could see too, just kind of the way I was betting it, but... Great run, run out for us, and it, like I said, it kind of just propelled us to where we were. were. I probably would have just checked, honestly, on the river. I don't think I was going to do another barrel if I missed, but the fact that we got it was just like, oh, yeah. So that was uh, definitely a, a good one to go over here, and I think I put the right sizing into. I didn't get, like, super greedy, which kind of brings me back to the value betting, guys. You, it just takes time to get good at, but... Really, you know, bringing this all home, we had a 7-8 suited here. This was actually a pretty crazy play um, that I made on this, so get ready for this. But the flop for this, oh my God. There was probably a couple different ways I could have played this. I decided to play it a little bit slow, but the flop was like ridiculous. I think we're going to have two things going for us here. We're going to have the... Um, a straight draw, like a weird straight draw, and then like a straight flush draw or a flush draw, one of the two. Crazy flop though. This is one of those hands that I'm okay getting three bet with. 
I'm going to make a call here every single day with this hand, especially because we're up in the profit. We could afford to make some of these calls now. And this guy went up to 20 bucks, so I did make the call here. So he's representing two overcards or possibly like a mid high pocket pair. But look at that, dude. Ridiculous. Ridiculous flop, man. Like, I'd be okay getting it all in right here. Um, But I decided just to call. Now, we missed on the turn. Which put us in a tricky spot. Um, I decided to go for a semi-bluff, I think shove here. And it was because he checked it. The fact that he checked it just told me he didn't have it. So that's the reason I made this play. He kind of just raised the white flag at me and I just pounced on it. Plus I figure if he's gonna make this call with a couple overcards like ace king or something, which is possible. We still have a lot of outs going to the river. You know what I'm saying? So, but ultimately he is going to fold. I like the way I played this. I, and it really, I just pounced on him because, you know, he checked it. And I think we were going to miss it. <laughs> yeah, we would have missed it. So yeah, I did like that play. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed another one here. I think, um, you know, overall you saw me make some good plays and just kind of hammering in the fact here that, you know, you could definitely make a lot of uh, a lot of good money, you know, playing uh, these stakes on Ignition right now, for sure. So like I said, um, if you want to learn more about them or just get on our, you know, poker newsletter, um, all that good stuff, we'll have those links below in the description. Subscribe if you haven't, tap that like, and we'll see you on the next poker video.